Hey, mathematicians, let's do your homework. All right, so we've got a box and whisker plot here, and we are trying to figure out which box and whisker plot represents the data that's in our list, which, oh, very annoyingly, is not in least to greatest order. So that's going to be the first step, is put it in least to greatest order. See, I see some 50s, some 60s, some 70s, some 40s, 80s, 90s. All right, I'm starting with the 40. Before I do my whole list, let me confirm. Okay, A has a minimum at 45. B does not. C has a minimum at 45. So does D. All right. Now, looking at our maximum is going to be 100. That's 100. Don't even need to look at B. That's 100. That's a 100. Okay, darn. I thought we could eliminate more than just B. So make your whole list. Find your median. Find your interquartile range or your Q1 and your Q3. You don't actually need the interquartile range. And start matching them up because it looks to me like we have the possibilities of 75. Of ooh, something in the middle of 80 and 85. And a 90. This one is also a 90, and this is a 70. All right, so that's a difference there. This is a 90 something, 92, 93, 94, some kind of decimal. This one's also a little bit in the middle of something, and this one's a 75. So, right away, if you end up with a Q1 of 70, we found our answer must be C. If you find up, if you end up with a Q1 of 70, Five, then we're choosing between A and D. Which pair of numbers are equivalent? So remember that when you are changing fractions to decimal form, you can divide them, and that will give you your decimal. There are other ways, but if you are ever a little unsure about your conversions between fractions and decimals, better to just do the division and get the actual decimal answer. Number three, Rowena is asked to compare the two rules, y equals 2x and y equals x plus 2. Before I even read, I can see this one's multiplicative and I can see this one's additive. All right, a says the value 2, 4 will belong to both rules. That means if x is 2, y will equal 4. So the way you can check that is to substitute y equals 2x. If x is 2, y is 4. y equals, if x is 2, y will also be 4. The values that satisf satisfy each rule lie on a line when graphed. So if I were to graph the equation y equals 2x, it would look like that and everything would be on a line. If I was to graph the equation y equals x plus 2, it would look like that, and every dot would be on a line. Yep. When x equals 3, the y value is the same for both rules. So now you want to do exactly what I just did here and test. Instead of saying 2 times 2, you're going to say 2 times 3, and 3 plus 2, and see if they equal the same thing, and then you can make your decision. And, oh, that was it, because the first one took up so much space. Now we're done with our homework.